now we're going to take a look at Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley is by far the most useless extension we've got on LM bits at the moment. Um, it's just more of an example of the sort of system we could build with something like Diagon Alley. So the concept is that the, the extension Diagon Alley is almost like a market stall, which you can lay your products out on, and then you can allow um, third-party indexes to list your products on their you know, front-end website. Um, it means that if one of those websites, one of those indexes, one of those you know um, markets were to be taken down, then for the merchant, it's just a case of uh, connecting to a new indexer, you know, to, to list their products. So it makes it less less you know of, of, of an incumbence to 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 the purse, to the merchant selling their products. Um, and remember that you know LM bits can run very well on Tor. So, um, and in some, like the Raspberry Bits, for example, it's going to be um, a standard, hopefully one day that it will just run through Tor, everything will run through Tor, including LM Bits. So, um, it, you could connect to a index, which was running, running on Tor as well. So this is the actual extension itself. So we can make a new product, we can connect to a new indexer. So we're going to make a product. Now we're going to select a wallet. I've only got one wallet at the moment. I could make other ones if I wanted to. Um, and this is kind of a way to categorize actually by the wallet we set. So we can lump products together with a wallet. So we're going to have our product. We'll have some Welsh cakes. If no one knows what Welsh cakes are, then I suggest you buy some and eat them because they're delicious. And then categories, cakes, bakery. Just put in, you know, whatever you think is a, a suitable category. And that's kind of for the indexer to take care of. Um, some cakes. Obviously, we'd put a better description than that. Now, for the image, we're going to use Imager. Um, this is just a way of not having images on your server itself, so you don't clock up your server. Uh, GitHub do it. Uh, it's a really neat system, a good idea. And for some marketplaces, it's probably not the best idea to have the things you're selling um, uh, images on your on your server. So um, yeah, and the the size should be a max of 500 by 500 pixels, uh, just as a standard. Um, so yeah, so you'd have to run it through Photoshop or, or GIMP or something. Now I haven't made a um, I haven't made a picture for Welsh cakes. So I'm just going to do a search for cakes and see what we've got, and then we'll just pick um, the best we can find. That looks nice enough. Excuse my slow internet. There you go. View image. Copy image. And then, oops, I think we actually want to copy the link even. There we go. Um, and then we set a price. So we're going to say 10,000 Satoshis. Quantity, we have 100 Welsh cakes for sale. There we are. So we're going to create a product. So, you know, it fills our table up here gives it a unique ID and then if we want we can you can edit the product or we can delete the product if we really want to we're going to make a new indexer um, so select the same wallet um, and now the indexer is only going to have access to the products on this wallet which you know is the Walsh cakes so this is why the wallets can kind of help to categorize things so shop name or should we call it the decentralized cake shop um, a link so you would put in a link Obviously, this indexer doesn't exist. There is no such thing as an indexer. No one's built one yet, but hopefully someone will. I'll have a crack at it if no one else does. Um, shipping zone. So I can ship my cakes to Australia, France, Italy, and they're my, that's my um, zone one for my, my shipping. So I'll only charge 20,000 Satoshis for shipping there. How's that? Zone two, I do also ship to Denmark and Hungary. Um, and Norway, um, but I'm going to charge a little bit more because they're harder for, to ship to for some reason. Um, this is an email you can just fill in, and then that would, if somebody, one of your customers wants to contact you, there's a way for them to contact you. So I'll put in a Proton Mail uh, address. And again, you know, you can edit, you can delete. Um, it gives you an ID, a unique ID. Now, in fact, when I when you first register this index, and in fact, every time you come on this, you, you reload this page, um, the extension is going to do a get request to shape.dcake.com with your ID 
Um, and then with that get request, um, the shop is gonna, sorry, the D cake is gonna take your ID and then do a post request back to you and ask you for your products. No, sorry, it's a get request to ask you for your products. Um, and we can kind of simulate that actually. Um, here, if we take this curl request in the API documentation, if I pop this into terminal, and we need to replace that with the indexer ID, which is here. Okay, and then go like that. There we are, cool. Um, and it sends us back a JSON file with all the products we've got access to. So we've got our cakes there, brilliant. And say if we wanted to place an order for one of those cakes, or get an invoice even, So these are kind of like the um, get and post requests, which um, shipping zone one. So yeah, we're we're in the ship the shipping zone. Let's say we're in shipping zone two, and we want to wash cakes. You can put in a customer address. Obviously, let's put in gobbledygook, and then an email. So this is a customer email. You you know. So whoever, whichever customer is buying your product, they would obviously fill out a form where they would, on this indexer, where they put in their email and their address. Again, they can just set themselves up a nice ProtonMail address. And then the product ID. So this is the actual ID of the product which they want to buy, which again would be done through the GUI of the indexer. So that's that there, the product we want. and the indexer ID. So remember the indexer has this ID and that kind of limits the amount of um, products they can have access to. Let's put that in there. I think it's got space there, so that's if I hit that. We should, boom, there we are, cool. We get a um, an invoice back. So this is a lightning invoice. So then the indexer could display that as a QR code, um, and then somebody could um, somebody could pay that if they want to. Um, shall I try paying it now? Oh, I haven't got my I haven't got a wallet on me. So if I refresh this now, we should. There we are. Cool. So there's the order which came in. See, um, if I pay that invoice. In fact, I will pay the invoice. Um, I just have to edit so I don't dox myself. TX bot to play the invoice. So pop it in there. Don't want to pay. Oh, 70,000 Satoshis. Jesus. I'm going to have to pull that money out. If I can't even pay, I don't even know if I've got that much on LNTX bot. <laughs> Didn't actually think about how much it would cost. So pay the invoice. It's taking a while. It's probably struggling to find it. Did it pay? Oh, it paid. Oh, God, that stings. Um, so that hopefully will turn up in my wallet. Oh, I think actually in order for it to turn up in your wallet, you need to, yeah, there we are. Goodness me. You need to click on the, the wallet and then it will just, you know, settle any any transactions. So there we are. Our 70,000 sats came in. Ah, there we are. You can see it's been paid. So now, you know, imagine that somebody's filled out that form on the index's website. They've paid. That 70,000 Satoshis is including the, um, better turn Telegram off for Docs me. That 70,000 Satoshis is including um, the delivery, which was, I can't remember how much, it was 50,000 Satoshis. And then uh, I think the cakes were 10,000 each. So um, so we could bought two. So it kind of calculates all that for you. And then um, just for your own records, then, you know, once it's been shipped, you can just click on that little button and it's shipped. There we are. Um, when you've shipped the, the product to the customer directly. So the index is just kind of like, it's just a middleman for people to browse products. Um, and it's just a, a point of failure which can be attacked, but it's not necessarily, you know, the end of the world if it does get attacked. Another index could just spring up somewhere else. Um, all of these tables have the ability to export CSV uh, for your records. So if I open this, here you can see I've got, um, all my orders and then you know you could do your usual 
uh, Excel magic with your with your orders there, and then it all goes into your, your wallet. So that's the concept for Diagon Alley. Okay. Um, the next stage, I suppose, is to actually make an indexer. And to be fair, making the indexer wouldn't be particularly hard. It's it's literally just a front end, a front end which is gonna go get a bunch, go get the products of all the um, uh, all the Diagon Alleys who are registered with it, and then list the products. Let someone search for them, and then uh, let someone fill out a form, um, and then request an invoice, pay the invoice, and then oh, there's another um, endpoint here where we can actually check to see whether the product has been shipped. So should we have a little look at that and see if that works too? Um, checking ID. Right, yeah, so if you look, um, when I requested the invoice, it came back with a checking ID. So that would be the ID the indexer then can then use to check to see if the product's been, or in fact the, um, the, buyer directly could probably check this but you could do it through the index site too so we've just stick the checking id on the end there and then hopefully shipped one so that means it's been paid so it gets a little one from there so that's the end of, of the demo for diagon alley um i'm really excited about the concept for it and um hopefully we'll have an index rolled out and um this can become an actual real way to do commerce at some point um and maybe even over tour so interesting fun times okay thanks for watching